Hey guys, Brian's here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's recap the price action from Tuesday, September 10th, 2024. This is the SPY that we're looking at here on the 15 minute time frame. We have the quant trading app scripts on our charts. We have both the intraday and the weekly levels. So if I turn off all my studies, this is a clean chart. This is with the scripts on the chart. If you'd like to learn more about QTA, link is in the description down below. And I'll also leave a link to the introductory video, which explains a lot of these levels. But let's just dive right into it and talk about the trade opportunities that happened. We are going to cover the confluence around taking this long scalp here back up to VWAP. Also the setup of this short opportunity here. And then also likely why the market closed around this area in which it did. This is the Quant Trading App Discord, in which we'll use to reference some of the notes and comments from yesterday in the Quant Chat. We'll also take a look at the SPX data feed right here. This is the full screen view of it, and we'll be able to walk through why I entered a trade in which I entered, which was this at the money iron butterfly. I ended up closing it out earlier on in the day, but the market ended up pinning almost exactly around the zero DTE. So I missed out on a lot of profit, but it's okay. I figure it's still valuable to share the trade regarding why would I even enter that type of iron fly on a day like this. And lastly, we'll take a look at some of the zero DTE gamma exposure on the SPX from yesterday. We'll take a look at the profile at key times throughout the day and how we can use this to help us better anticipate price action. Okay, so let's start with early in the morning. Why would I open up an iron fly? I believe I opened it right around there. So this is, I was thinking either an iron condo or an iron fly and ended up going with the iron fly at that time. So this was the short strikes. It was 5,500 as I was expecting the ES to be pinning around 5,500. The ES pinning around 5,500 is the equivalence of the SPX closing about five or 10 points below that level. So this is the ES here, as we can see, we ended up pinning right around 5,500. This is the SPX pinning around 495 or so. So they're off by about five to 10 points right now. I believe it's next week when these ES futures on Thinkorswim will roll forward towards the December expiration. So we'll see a huge separation in price between the ES and the SPX. But for now, they're trading pretty close together. My logic behind running this iron fly at this point came from taking a look at our usual data points. So the gamma exposure at this point was pretty mixed. At this snapshot in time, so 15 minutes after the market opens, so between 15 minutes after the market opens and about 30 minutes after the market opens is when I was thinking the market will be pretty choppy for the day. However, I had a slight bullish bias to this area here just because I was liking the volume that was coming in and also liked how the absolute gamma strike was up here and also these two big mountains. So that's the first thing to take away is that we had a decent amount of positive gamma. However, this entire profile looked pretty mixed to me. So I wasn't willing to take a long trade. I wasn't willing to sell puts in a put credit spread and I wasn't willing to buy calls as this did not show enough strength. And the market was already so close to the strike in which I thought it was going to go. So it didn't seem like it was worth it to take a long trade when, we're, when we are already so close to the target. On the downside here, it looked like this would be our potential support if the market sold off. So we had potential resistance up here or potential target. And then we also had a target to the downside here for bears. The market is in between these two, but regarding how the gamma exposure looks between here, this is all pretty choppy and this is pretty mixed. And I don't like trading a direction when the gamma exposure looks like this, especially within this, especially when the price is in between a range like this, as, as price action tends to be harder to read in this type of gamma exposure profile, which means in my opinion, it's perfect for iron condors. Why not set an iron condor around this entire range? That way, if the market is just choppy around here, we can just benefit off of time decay. Just based off of this gamma exposure profile, let's take a look at our range for the day. We have 510 on the upside set for the SPX. So I'm just using right where the high positive gamma bars end. And then on the downside, we have 425. So we have to the downside 425 and to the upside 510. Let's take a look at the SPX now. How low did the market go? It looks like we went down to about 442 and then to the upside, how high did we go? It looks like we went up to about 498. So we'll call this 500 and we'll call this 440. So here's 440 and here's 495. So right within this range here. So the market did not go lower than this strike here, and it did not go higher than this strike here. So 440 to 500, 440 to 500, and those were well within the range of these high gamma levels. So here to here. So just off of this analysis, we can already see that to think or consider an iron condor was a decent idea, but that was not the only reason for me to consider the iron fly. The other reason came straight from the SPX trade engine from Quant Trading App. It was the fact that the markets 
at the open was already so close to the highest positive gamma strike. We were already so close to the absolute gamma strike. They happened to match at 505. It also happened to be right where the power strike was at 500. So we had 500, we had 505, these two pretty close together. The market is already pretty close to it. And then to the downside, we had Max Payne right here, pretty close to the highest negative gamma strike. These high gamma nodes, this is our highest negative gamma strike. This is our highest positive gamma strike. They were well within the expected moves from the open. So this is our one plus standard deviation expected move from the open. And this is our negative one expected move from the open. So this is our range right here from the SPX trade engine. This is what it's calculating. And this information is derived from the options chain. I liked that the gamma exposure strikes that were really high in positive and negative gamma were within this range. I interpreted this as it's probably going to be a range bound day. And yes, it is still early in the day to be opening up a trade or to be considering the power strike as this becomes more important later in the day. I already liked that the market was so close to it and also the absolute gamma strike and that the max pain strike was right around here. These are all key strikes that are well within the expected move for the day. This tends to lead to choppier price action or the market's closing relatively flat. As we play out the tape here and we see how things started moving, the absolute gamma strike did bounce around a lot, but I'll just jump to the end of the day and we can see that the power strike never really moved. It stayed at 500 all day. The absolute gamma strike did oscillate a little bit more. And that was one of the reasons why I closed out my iron fly a little bit earlier as this was making me spend way too much time looking at my chart and I needed to move on with other tasks for the day. I did just want to point out the fact that the power strike remained flat as this will contribute to another trade setup in which we had down here, which is 1020 Eastern time or about 50 minutes after the market opens. That's where we get this setup here. And to see it easier, let's head over to the SPY. We have Confluence with the two-day anchored view up, and we have the QTA intraday zone, both right there, letting us know that this is a decent area to risk off of. If you're buying below view up, which is this gray level right here, and you're scalping intraday, your target essentially becomes view up. I forgot to mention another reason I was expecting it to be a little bit choppy is because we were at the weekly level. Whenever the market reaches one of these weekly levels, I expect it to be choppy around that level for a bit, especially when it's this early in the week. If we consider it, this is where the market closed on Friday and by Monday, we're already at the Quantrading app weekly sell zone. Price tends to spend some time in this area as it's going to consolidate to figure out if we're going to continue higher up to our two sigma level or if it's going to go to the top of the sell zone. I think the scalp right here was simple enough. There isn't really much to exemplify on that. As we head back to the quant chat, we have potential support found on the expected move from the open. So the expected move from the open, as well as the one sigma close levels are usually going to act as some sort of support resistance on the first touch of them. So this is the market selling right off to the expected move strike of the open. So this is three indications right here, the intraday zone, the two day anchor VWAP, the expected move from the open. The power strike is still up here. The absolute gamma strike did bounce down. So this ruined what would have been an A plus opportunity in my opinion. I would have loved if the absolute gamma strike was still up here as that would have given an extra reason to put a little bit more risk on to be long targeting back up to the high of day. We have max pain is higher. We have the power strike is higher, but we didn't have the absolute gamma strike at this point being higher, but we know what happened. It did end up bouncing back up, but this was it in real time here as it dropped down and then it bounced right back up a few minutes later. For me, at least this was making it a little bit difficult to have conviction regarding holding a long trade. And this type of oscillation in the absolute gamma also contributed to me closing out my iron butterfly as the oscillation in the absolute gamma was ruining my conviction regarding expecting the markets to stay within this range here. So I closed out my iron fly somewhere in here for about a 50 cent loss. The long scalp, however, was a good one. And I was happy to see that some of you guys caught this trade here as we did end up making it back up to view up. This is our next clear trade opportunity in the day. This is a setup that's been in my playbook for probably five years now. And this is that 50% retracement. So here we go. I'm going to switch over to my fibs. Let's just draw this out right here. Boom, boom. We talked about it yesterday in this opportunity here. We had our 50% retracement from the previous day's low to that current day's high. Market rallies from Friday's low. Then we have a pull in 
and then we have continuation in the direction of momentum. So let's rewind this. That was addressed in a video that just recently came out. So what do we have here? Market has gapped up. This is our high of day, and then momentum is to the downside. We sell off pretty aggressively in the first hour of the day, then that momentum slows down and price ends up bouncing. Where do we bounce back up to? We have that 50% retracement area to that 61% retracement area. So right within this zone, it's often referred to by traders as the golden pocket. So right within here, this becomes our area of potential supply. If we see rejection here, then we have ourselves a trade opportunity once we can find some additional confluence with the expectation that price is going to continue in the direction of the momentum. Why is this considered momentum? Look at how fast that sell-off was. This is a decent drop within an hour's time. Similar to the day before, this is aggressive momentum right here. Look at how fast the price climbed. Let's draw out some fibs. What do we have right here? The market went straight up. As soon as momentum stalls out, this is it stalling out. It pulls back. And where does it pull back to? This is that 50 to 60% retracement. We can see the buyers are aggressive here. We can see the wicks coming off these candles. We can see this is this is a zone that's holding and then we have the next leg up trading with the fibs is definitely something that is more of a skill set and it will likely take a newer trader some time to understand the nuances and i don't always highlight the fibs in every trade but, but it is something that i like to look for before entering or exit any type of directional trade where are we in relation to the current trends momentum intraday the current trends momentum was to the downside this was our aggressive move down this bounce right here is the retracement if momentum is to continue, I want to see the momentum continue right around that 50 to 60% retracement mark. But it wasn't only about the fibs right there. We had confluence with our studies. This is the retracement to that weekly resistance level from Quant Trading App. So price sells off here. We bounce right back to the VWAP target in which we would expect. We go a little bit higher and then we see re the rejection right within the Fibonacci retracement zone. But that's also right where we have the weekly resistance level. And then we have this expected drop. On a day with a lot of momentum, this would be expected price action. It's not a trade, however, I took and it's not a trade in which I would take as I'm not really a fan of shorting the SPX on weeks after it sold off a lot. So this is just pointing out the same setup here. This was after the fact, so it's not a trade in which I took, but just pointing out because it's a setup in which I've shared a few times on this channel, and I know some of you guys actually prefer shorting versus being long. Next, let's take a look at this opportunity down here. This is where if we turn off all of our studies and we actually turn on the gamma exposure levels from the start of the week, we retrace right back to our high positive gamma strike, pretty close to the second highest positive gamma strike, right within this zone in which there's a lot of positive gamma. These levels are from the start of the week. This is the analysis here from yesterday. Share these levels. Anyone in QTA, you can do this yourself. This is how I like to start the week. Link is in the description in which I explain how I like to start my week with the gamma exposure profile. This profile right here is pointing out 544 and 543. These are our high positive gamma strikes. So, so 544. 543 market sells right off into this zone some sort of demand was established here yesterday and we had a reversal at that time what did it look like on the trade engine this is around middle of the day here market comes down to the one sigma expected range for the day the n1 strike did drop a little bit lower the absolute gamma strike did drop a little bit lower so this isn't any reason to act yet we want to wait for some signs of confirmation we have our first green candle starting to form here this is showing a change in trend we have momentum growing back to the upside we reclaim the one sigma close strike and now we see the absolute gamma strike has bounced back up we're back within our range for the day we're back within the expected close for the day the absolute gamma strike has now finally moved back up here and this is where it remains for the balance of the day this is the closing print by the way i didn't download the last few images but we can see right here the absolute gamma strike and power strike remained around 500 and that's ultimately again where the spx ended up closing so we had the power strike on the spx staying strong all day by pointing up here the absolute gamma strike was bouncing around a lot so it's understandable if that messes with your conviction we have price reclaiming the levels in which it sold off from earlier in the day. This is where the absolute gamma strike now bounces back up. It's later in the day, so the power strike has a little bit more significance now. The SPY reclaims the intraday zone, we reclaim the two-day anchor VWAP, and we reclaim VWAP. So now we have reclaimed key levels to tell us who's now winning the day. Remember, if price is below VWAP, then beers are essentially winning the day if price is above vwap then bulls are winning the day so now that bulls have reclaimed a dynamic level that 
most day traders are also using on their chart the standard view app that ships right in most charting platforms this is the moment when bears are like oh crap we are no longer in control we are not as safe as bulls are going to have more confidence now it's almost like a tug of war this type of price action in the afternoon is not unexpected for my personal non-directional trade, the iron fly, I wasn't expecting this much volatility to start the day. I wanted to just set my iron flies and be on cruise control for the morning. I didn't really want to manage and micromanage and have to enter and exit. To be honest, I was just looking for a lazy day. I wanted to set it and forget it. This is the excellent type of identification. This is still early in the morning. Thomas can recognize already that if we get over the weekly sell zone, I think we have the Wi-Fi up to 550. They are already identifying that if the SPY can get back above the weekly sell zone, this is a potential target now. We've seen this type of price action and quant trading app play out for a few years now, whereas we know if we start reclaiming these levels, what happens with price? It's likely to drift up to this next high positive gamma nodes. So the iron fly in which I closed earlier in the day ended up being pinned right around here. So I missed out on a few thousand dollars. I definitely should have made it a uh, broken wing. So you see, this is where I had my, my 50 cent loss. Again, didn't want something with this much risk on a zero DTE in which I would have had to uh, micromanage, but the iron fly and the iron condor both worked out. The analysis at the start of the day worked out. Hopefully this review, this recap, this analysis can provide some context and help you guys. This is a heavier video as it's not entirely that beginner friendly, I think. I combined multiple tools and in one video but the point i wanted to emphasize is the thought process behind why i was expecting the markets to have a small close so we opened here and then we closed here so the market really didn't move much from a net change perspective from the open to close why this is an a setup right here a a plus why this is also a decent entry here why there's opportunity down here or what the thought process should be down here and then ultimately the market ended up closing where we expected